Congratulations on this. Thank you do such a good job becoming Freddie Mercury. I want to know when did it click for you? Was it like when you were on stage? Was it the teeth? Was it the outfits? Was there a moment? What was the moment? Um, it was collective. I, it, I would go to Jan Sewell who did my makeup and she did, I think, an astounding job. But then I would carry the makeup into uh, all the costume fittings with Julian Day. And then I used that as rehearsal time. I said, here's Freddie. He would try on clothes all the time. Let's see what reflects well on stage. Let's see how it flows. How am I going to be able to move in this? And so all those hours in, in um, just trying out my wardrobe uh, fittings were hours of rehearsal, hours I got to play as Freddie. And there were moments when I, I could just see uh, people appreciating the mischievous side of him. Yeah. And uh, that was it. I saw you talk about this. You said that the teeth kind of informed your character. He had better posture. Like you learned a lot about him through that. And you actually kept the teeth and got them plated in gold, right? So why did you do that? And also, where are you keeping them? And what's your plans with them? The teeth did. I mean, they were, as soon as I put them in my mouth, I felt uh, very self-conscious. And then my, my posture was elongated. I felt more elegant. And I don't know if that's how he felt, but something may, uh, you know, compels me to think that that was the case for him. Uh, I loved having them by the end of it, not very much at the beginning. Yeah. Uh, I felt naked when I took them out the last day of filming. And I thought, what? What better way to honor Freddie in the most audacious, ostentatious way than to have those bad boys dipped in gold? Where are they in your house? If, if I tell you, then someone's probably going to get into that cabinet. I know that your love for Queen definitely runs deep. You kind of gave Bohemian Rhapsody a second life with Wayne's World, which is really cool. So how surreal was it to be a part of this movie now? This was the craziest thing. I mean, it was a long time ago. and. Um, that I did Wayne's World, and I fought very hard to have Bohemian Rhapsody in Wayne's World. And then, to get a call about a year ago, would you like to be in a movie called Bohemian Rhapsody and play the record executive who tells Queen that they can't do Bohemian Rhapsody <laughs> on their album? And I was like, just, I'm in, I'm so in, it's crazy, I said, so. Yeah, what do you hope that people get from this film? I mean, you you knew Queen pretty well, right? You, had a good, you didn't at all. Did you ever meet Freddie Mercury? I, I, met them, I met them way after the fact. In fact, he's right there. And uh, I'm starstruck, dude. <laughs> yeah, do you get starstruck? Like, you're right by Brian May. Ro rock stars and hockey players are the two people that I just... Now, have yeah. you played a rock star before in your time as actor? <laughs> In my mind, yeah. uh, in the bathroom, uh, in my bedroom, not here. Uh, this is this is something that was so special. This was one of those no-brainer jobs, right? Like, the great thing about being an actor is to be able to live out the other dreams that you had that you could never actually achieve. And so for this one, when I got to learn that I was going to be a rock star, not just any rock star, right, but like in the biggest band of all time, one of the very coolest experiences of my entire life. I always thought, you know, I'm in my 30s now, and I always had dreams as a child of being a rock star, but I thought that ship had sailed, right? I got to an age now, it's difficult to be a rock star. But this is the beautiful thing about being an actor, you just get, a, you, you have a taste, you have a taste of playing somebody else's dreams, you know? And uh, I must admit, getting up on stage and, and playing those concerts, particularly Live Aid, I have to say, was like, you know, there were like out of body experiences at times where I was just like taking it all in, just thinking, what an unbelievable privilege this is. Yeah. Yeah. And you really did look the part. I thought it was really cool that Brian May actually lent some of his clothes mm. for the production, which is amazing. On Instagram, you posted with that 80s yeah. white leather bomber jacket. So, yeah. how hard was it to have to give that back? Oh, uh, it was tough. It was tough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd love to. I mean, that bomber jacket was absolutely amazing. Amazing. I mean, the shoulder pads are so broad. I had to walk sideways through door frames to just get through. Uh, I don't know if you could, people don't wear clothes like that anymore. I think that's what I love about the, all of the looks in the films. It's like they're just like they're so bold and, and like carefree and uh, outrageous. I love it. What look do you want to bring back or trend that you experienced in the movie? I can tell you a look that I don't want to bring back. Okay. And that's white clogs. It doesn't actually, it doesn't matter the color. Just I think clogs. you're wearing the clogs in the picture I, as well. I am, I am. But like wooden soled shoes are not good, are not good. <laughs> and not comfortable either. No, it's like walking on like wooden like horseshoes. It's horrible. 
<laughs> um, you guys all do such a great job. Obviously, Robbie Malik plays a great Freddie Mercury. Was there something that he did or said specifically where you realized, oh, we've arrived. Like, oh, this is Freddie now. Oh, I mean, um, there's this beautiful moment in the film uh, when we were doing the I Want to Break Free music video. Um, out of nowhere, uh, he just, at the end, when the director, in the scene, when the director of the scene shouted cut and the music video was over, he just went, perfect. And it was like this, like, we just, Freddie just came into the room. It was just, a, he transformed at that moment. There's another beautiful moment in the film where he's writing the lyrics for Bohemian Rhapsody. And um, it's just a close up of him writing lyrics on a pad, thinking and like going through these thoughts. And he just says, oh, that's really good. And uh, I just think that's like one of the most beautiful, well-observed, complicated moments. You can see the emotions that he's going through of, like, of those lyrics, but also the, the excitement of writing something brilliant. It's, it's, he, was, he was incredible. He transformed for the role. Yeah. So when you watch the movie, obviously you're a producer on it. Like, what is the moment and the part in the movie that gives you the chills the most? <laughs> it's funny that one of my favorite bits is a piece that um, some of the... Uh, the people at the top wanted to cut out and it's the piece where Freddie is struggling to uh, to tell us that he wants to leave you know and he wants to do his solo career you know and I love that you can see this indecision he's like very nervous and stuff and it's exactly Freddie you know when I see that when I see Rami do that that's Freddie for me and, and I love that because you see the inside of the man at that point you see his kind of his uncertainty and, and his passion um, but you see his, his fear as well. I think everything is naked at that point, and I love that. Now, no, no, um, I saw that you lent some outfits for... Yeah. The, did you get yeah. all those back, or did they try to keep yeah, them? Yeah, I got them back, yeah. yeah. <laughs> your, your closet must be pretty amazing. Have you kept a lot of the outfits you wore while performing with Queen? Well, I'm one of these people who keep stuff, you know, and I have a huge archive, not just clothes, but I mean, all the records that we ever made in, in, and all the releases in, in various countries, I have that stuff. But it's very useful because if we wanted to reissues, I have it there. You know, I have all the artwork and all, all the uh, pressings, yeah. What was it like being in a movie with Mike Meyer? It's so hard. Uh, you watch people break on SNL, and now I totally understand why. Before I thought it was a gimmick. It is not. He has you in stitches. It's hard to get work done because you cannot stop laughing at this human. Is that true? How do you feel about that statement? Rami is nothing short of a genius. <laughs> there, I will Talk walk away. Amazing. 